In this video, we're going to see an example of working with generics in Java. So we'll start off with, we'll create a generic class. So a generic class is a class that has some generic type, and we'll use that generic type throughout the class. And then when we instantiate an object of that class, we'll actually declare what that type will be. And then Java will use type checking to make sure that we use the correct type. So let's see how that works. So we'll say public class thing, and that's going to be the class that we're writing. And to indicate that this is a generic class, we'll add a generic type at the end. We'll have a private member of that type, and that'll be the actual thing that's stored here. And we'll also, we'll just do a, a count. So let's create a constructor, and we'll allow Java to automatically get that started for us. Let's also create a two-string method. And again, the one that Eclipse gives us by default is fine for our purposes. Okay, so here's our class. So pretty simple. We, the thing to keep in mind here is that when we instantiate a thing object, we're going to declare what this type will be, and then that'll be the type that this thing variable will have, and also this thing parameter. So now in my main method, let's declare some new things. Actually, before I do this, I want to put a comment here. The thing to keep in mind here is that we have to instantiate the things with a type, and that replaces T in the class. So if I say thing integer, that's going to mean that thing one will need to be instantiated as a thing of integers. And I'll pass in one for thing and then five for the count. I can also make a thing of strings and I'll instantiate that with the string hello and I'll say the count is 10. And I can print these out. And let's test this to see that it works. And that looks good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a generic method. So here we're not creating a class. We're just saying here's a method that's going to take a generic type. So it's a public static, and then we need to declare that it's a generic. So here's our generic type and two parameters of that generic type, A and B. And then we're going to say if A equals B, then we'll say A and B are the same. And otherwise, we'll say that they're not the same. Okay, so this will work with any type. Now you'll notice the only thing we really know about these types is that they descend from the object class. So we have two string, which we use here. We have equals, but if this was, for example, if we pass strings in, we couldn't use the length function or something like that. So keep that in mind when you're using generic types that you are very limited in the things you do with those objects. Let's test these out. So we'll say our same one and two our same five and five. We'll also say hello and world, and we'll do the same thing, CGCC, CGCC. So when I run this, you can see that it actually, whether I pass integers or strings to that method, really anything that implements equals in an appropriate way, we're gonna get that to actually check. In fact, every object has equals in it because it descends from the object class. Although if we don't override that in the classes we make, equals may not provide the result we expect. However, in this case it does because we're just using, in this case, primitive integers, but then they get auto-boxed into integer objects once they're passed as a parameter here. So this is just a real quick introduction to how to work with generics. It's kind of a complicated topic to get your head around the first time you see it. So if this doesn't make sense, we will be using generics pretty much for the rest of the semester in everything we do, because we don't want to write specific collection classes for every different type of object. We want to have just a generic collection that we can just throw any type of object into. But the benefits you get here versus just saying, hey, I'm just going to have an object reference, is now if I try to do something with thing one, since it's declared with an integer type, if I tried to put a string in there or something, I would get an error because it's like, no, this is a integer thing. This isn't a string thing. So the generic types gives us some type safety and it's always good to write code that the compiler can detect errors in for you. And so now you should be ready to start seeing some generic collections.